What's up guys and welcome back. This week I'm going to be talking about what could be considered a controversial subject, although I don't exactly understand why it should be. And that is the subject of how to replace or repair metal brake lines. Now in, especially up north, but I mean, even down here, we get the same problem. Steel brake lines can rust, they can corrode and you get holes in them, causing brake fluid leaks and loss of brake pressure, making the brakes not work. So what I've seen a lot of people talking about is how to patch in pieces of metal brake line. Now, obviously, if you can fabricate the line from end to end, then that's great. And you can just bolt it in right where all the factory stuff is. But let's say you can't do that for whatever reason, and you need to just patch a piece of it. One thing that I've seen, and I've even seen some big YouTubers suggest doing, is using compression fittings to join the new brake line to the old brake line. Here's why you're not supposed to do that. First of all, because it says so directly on the package. Anytime a package that is something you're looking at buying says specifically not to use it for what you're trying to use it for, you should probably rethink that. I mean, they're trying to sell the product. If it would work for what you're trying to use it for, I don't think they would tell you not to use it. Second of all, it's illegal to use compression fittings in metal brake lines in a lot of places. And the reason why that is, is because Compression fittings, unlike the way your metal brake lines attach factory, which is through flares and flare nuts, compression fittings basically com are comprised of a little fitting that pretty much crushes a small copper ball around each fitting or each side of the line to seal it. But the only thing that holds that together is the friction between those two pieces. If any of you have ever used these fittings before, you know that when you unscrew the side, you can take the nut and the ball right back off. So it's not deforming the metal. It's not doing anything that creates any kind of a permanent attachment. It's literally just squeezing the metal around it tight, just barely tight enough, if you tighten it enough, that it will seal it off. Now they are not rated for very high pressures. And that is the other reason why they don't suggest using them. And the thing is, if you exceed a compression fittings pressure, it's not like it's gonna start to leak. Most likely you're gonna blow the fitting off the line entirely. And the problem with that is, especially when it comes to brakes, is if you blow it completely off the line, then you're talking about losing 100% of your brake pressure, at least in that circuit, all at once. So why do they make these if you can't use them for brake lines? Well, that's easy. There's a lot of other kind of lines that you can use them for. You can use them for metal fuel lines because most fuel lines at the most see around 45 or 50 or so PSI of pressure, which is not that much and is okay. Also, the lines that go to boost gauges, you can use them for those. You can use them for oil feed lines. You can use them for oil feed lines to gauges and stuff. All of that's low enough pressure. And the other side of it is, even if it did fail in those applications, you're not gonna die, which is sort of important. So there is a purpose for those fittings. They are made for something. There is a reason that they make them, but it is not for brake lines. Now, most of the time, what I see them used for is in rear brake line, because that's the most common place to have them rust out. And the one good side to that is that rear brake lines generally don't see as much pressure and as much sustained pressure as the front does, since the front do the majority of the braking versus the rears. So have I seen these used successfully? Yes, they can hold up to that kind of pressure for a fairly significant amount of time. They can work. However, can should and might are not words that I, for the most part, prefer to use when I'm talking about my vehicle's braking system. But another thing that I can say for sure is that the compression fittings are not DOT legal most places. They will not pass race car tech inspection. Most motorsports events that I've seen will not pass a compression fitting repair for tech for a race car for the same reasons because they're prone to failure. And the other thing is though, yes, in some ways they're a little easier to use. 
you're not saving much money in using those versus repairing the thing correctly. So what do I mean by repairing them correctly? Because there, the, there is a correct way to make a patch in a metal brake line. You don't have to replace the entire thing. So I can explain that to you, but what I decided I would do for the sake of this is I'm going to show you. Okay, so hopefully you guys will be able to see all of this pretty well. This is going to represent your broken brake line. As you can see, I've actually cut it, but we're going to rejoin that to another piece the right way. Now, first thing that you're gonna have to do if you're repairing one under a car is to cut the bad section out until you get a good solid piece of steel like this one, and you're gonna need to do that on both sides. Then you're gonna wanna go to any auto parts store and buy a section like this of pre-made brake line, which will already have flares on it. It will always already have nuts on it. Then you're going to need a couple of these flare nuts and one of these flare nut unions in the same size. From there, it's pretty simple. Now, you're gonna need a tubing cutter. Tubing cutters are not too hard to come by. This is a fairly fancy one. This one, you put around and it actually ratchets, which is great for getting into really tight spaces, but they make some little small ones too. I mean, any of them will work. Once you have a piece cut like this, you're gonna need a line flaring kit. Line flaring kits are pretty easy to come by nowadays. Any auto parts store pretty much is gonna have some version of this. Now, you will need to know if you're doing a double or a single flare. That's pretty easy to figure out. If you look at your fitting, if you look at the inside, see if I can get where you guys can see this. If you look at the inside, you will see that little piece in there. If that sticks up, it's gonna be a double flare. If not, it's a single flare. This is what a double flare looks like. That's what a double flare looks like. A single flare basically is like this, only it's more bubble shaped. So the first thing you do before you flare it, you're gonna take one of the flare nuts like this and put it on the line, slide it way back so it's out of your way. Then you're gonna go ahead and flare it. You'll need to determine what size it is, which is pretty easy. I mean, pretty much it's only gonna fit into the one that it is supposed to fit in and it will fit pretty snugly. You just open this up like this, stick this through. Now, wait, I'm sorry, I'm getting out of order. Once you've determined what size it is, this is quarter inch, you're going to take the corresponding double flare piece, which is this. You take the end of the, of the tubing that you've cut, stick it through the hole, and you're just going to take this piece and sit it right here and make the fatter base piece of that even with this. Then it's just a matter of tightening this down to hold it like so. Once you've got that decently tight, you're going to take this piece, put it inside the tubing like this. You're gonna take this piece, which will go down over this and some of the different kits will look different. So, I mean, don't panic if it's not exactly like this, but it, it will work the same way. Once you've got this lined up like this, you're basically just going to tighten it down until it stops. You should feel it come to a positive stop at some point. Like that. Then you loosen it, back it off, pull this piece out. Now, if you look at it right now, having a single flare line, you're finished. You don't have to do anything else. However, since the parts that I have here are actually double flare, we'll go to the next step. To double flare with this, this small flare piece removed, all you're gonna do is take the exact same piece, go back over it, center it over the line, and then you just run it down again. And all this does is take the top and crush it down into the shape that you saw on the line earlier. Then 
you remove it like so. And that is your double flare. Now, once you have this side flared and you have your flare nut on, the next thing you're gonna do is take the coupler, which you'll see has a kind of fitting where they actually fit tight together, but you're just gonna screw these two together, then take the one on the car, or if, you've, if this is the one on the car, the other one, you're gonna take its flare nut and it just screws into the other side like this. Then you'll need to obviously tighten it down with wrenches. But what's great about this is that is 100% solid. I can loosen both sides, which they're not even tight right now, and I still can't pull these apart because the end of the line is captured in this flare, which is what you want in a brake line, something that your life literally depends on working correctly. And that's it, I mean, that's perfect. If that fails again and you need to remove a piece, you can just unscrew one side, make a new line, flare it with the nut on it again and reattach it and you're good to go. Okay, so now you can see, it's really not that hard to repair a metal brake line correctly. The tools are rentable, so if you don't do this regularly like I do, you don't have to spend the money to buy them. Most tool places will rent those out and give you all of your money back when you return them. They don't take much more time. It's a little more effort, but not a lot more effort. And they're three or four times easily as safe as using them the other way. And you don't have to worry about running into problems with it not being legal or not passing inspection or anything like that for basically a few extra minutes of time. So in my opinion, and you can let me know what you think about this, but in my opinion, taking the extra couple minutes to do it the right way is well worth any potential issues that you might have doing it the wrong way and saving a few minutes or a couple dollars. But that's what I have to say on that subject. As I said, I'm anxious to see what you guys say. Drop me in the comments what you think about that. If you like this video, if you like me talking about these types of subjects, please give it a thumbs up so that I know. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so that you know when I upload and I'm gonna be out of here for this one. By the way, shirts are available again, all three designs. Check that out, link in description, and I'll drop a few more links down there about the brake line subject if you'd like to check that out. I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching and peace.